Brian. How are you doing? How are you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. So you're with California Audio Technology. That's correct. Uh, what in the heck is California Audio Technology? Well, my brother and I founded CAT. We're actually known as CAT, which stands for California Audio Technology. Nice. In uh, 1990, which is 22 years ago. And uh, both my brother and I went to engineering school. But you're only like 30 years old, so how did <laughs> <Thank> that happen? <laughs> Child prodigy, right? Yeah, yeah no sleep. Yeah. Out, right? <laughs> but uh, no, my brother and I went to engineering school at uh, University of California, Davis. And um, a couple of our top professors we worked with very closely throughout college and decided that there was going to be a niche and a necessity to make really custom high-end one-off audio equipment. So we actually do 3D CAD drawings. And we work with the top architects and the builders and the designers and the really, really high-end AV specialists, the real great installation companies that take more of an architectural and engineering approach to actually installing and designing the high-end systems for large estates, both indoors and outdoors. Um, mega yachts, literally the 100 meter, yeah. up to 150 plus meter. Um, large scale aircraft, recording studios. But the great thing is to be able to do it custom. And if you kind of look at the world, there's a lot of things that are custom. The home is custom. Yeah. Um, they literally sit down with an architect and a designer. Both the husband and wife get together with that team that's all very highly educated. And they work with concept concepts and designs and materials. You know, the, the home is not particle board and plastic. Yeah. The home is made out of marble and granite and stainless steels and aluminums and concrete. Everything's chosen everything's specifically chosen. to match their tastes. Absolutely. And so from an audio perspective, yes, option one, which is not what we do, is to hang speakers on the walls or yeah. try to hide them in the cabinets. Our approach is kind of like something like what a car audio would do, but on steroids. Um, or what a Formula One approach would be or what the swimming pool approach would be. If you look at the backyard swimming pool, people don't just dig a hole and put in a doughboy yeah. on a $100 million estate. Or yeah. million. Yeah. They just sit down there with the landscape contractor and the swimming pool contractor, and they design how that's going to look. The whole thing, the, whole Tr thing. the trees, the bushes, the, trees, the water, the falls, water the, you know, exactly. yeah, the whole, the marble, yeah, the granite. yeah. And so every little detail. Audio, the same approach. Another thing is, in audio, loudspeaker grills are typically free which yep. means the grills are plastic or some cheap corrugated yep. metal. And that's necessary at certain price points. Yep. At our point, it's like, how do we bring world-class audio into these environments? Without people without even, people seeing, even it. seeing it. right? So now we're actually going to sit down with the architects and the designers and the builders and the wife and the husband and say, if a grill could be made to look however you wanted it to, which means it's going to disappear, yeah. and out of any material you wanted to, whether it's stainless steel or anodized aluminums, how would it be? So we actually hand that wife, that husband, that designer, that architect, that builder, whomever is integral in the process, a blank sheet of paper and say, you tell us what you'd like to have. And then you guys make something impossible. When we make something impossible, possible. So if I say, okay, you know, I'm a big fan of Picasso, uh, or pa yeah, Picasso, and uh, I love uh, stainless steel. And so I want to have a Picasso basically replicated on stainless steel, hanging on the wall, but I want sound coming out of it too. No problem. Okay. In fact, a lot of <laughs> yeah, our of course clients, there's no problem, right? right? Anybody can yes, do that, right? This is the word to yeah. say. Um, a lot of our clients are very, very known for being very um, worldwide prestigious art collectors. Uh huh. And of course, there's Picasso, Monet, Rembrandt, Pissarro uh -huh. on the walls. Wait, what if they said, "I have a real Picasso"? Yes, of course. And I want the sound coming out of it, or from behind it, or something. I mean, we actually don't put sound through $10 million plus paintings. Yeah, probably not. Um, we put it and hide it behind and around the paintings. Right, right, right. Um, I, they will replicate those paintings on stainless steel, as, as you said before. Mm -hmm. um, typically, we by, by using materials that otherwise could not be used in audio, literally horsehair, materials as unforgiving as my suit, um, there's a company called Eurospan that Owens Corny Orange that, that does um, seamless fabrics the size of a white wall. You wouldn't even know from a distance that, that sound was even put behind it. Yeah. And then you hang your art back as it would have gone on that wall before. And then high-end audio is put behind it. To do that, we actually have to custom build the enclosures so they can be built shallow enough to fit into the walls or floors or ceilings. We have to build those enclosures dense enough so it doesn't vibrate anything. Yep. So we will build them out of corions and avonites and marbles and granites and concretes and steels and aluminums. 
and then we actually manufacture every driver individually. Wow. So whether we're building it out of aluminum or titanium, we can actually adjust the depth and so forth of each driver. And then finally, when you put now, those unforgiving materials- That's a ridiculous amount of engineering. It's a ridiculous Because it means, it, it means you're starting basically from scratch on every single individual that's component. That's 100% scratch. In okay, fact, so we're what an I, engineering company first, and a custom manufacturing company second. So, okay, then I imagine you guys, I, I mean, in my brain, you've got this manufacturing facility and you've got lathes and CNC routers, routers and-, and, and sure. Laser. So everything, right? Yeah. I mean, first of all, that sounds like a dream place for me to come visit, okay? Because, I mean, I love all If you want to make a car just for fun, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can do you it. Know, <laughs> I, I mean, like, personally, I'm into this kind of stuff. I have a CNC plasma cutter at my do house. You really? Oh, yeah, I'm a welder and all this. Wow. So I love, I, uh, every, I so just. So if we ever get too busy, I'll just give you some plans. That's right, just give me, call me up. And, I mean, <laughs> what you're talking about, uh, to me, sounds like a dream because, you, you get to just make factory. new stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> the one little catch is people kind of have to have a big budget. You that know? is a little catch. But if you can find those kind of customers who say, look, the sky's the limit. I mean, if I'm going to build a 100-foot yacht, you know, and I know what those cost, then, you know, dropping another six, seven digits to uh, get it decked out the way it's I want. It's possibly less than the stairs on the way to your hot tub. Yeah, really right? it is, <laughs> literally. It's interesting as you mentioned cost. I also like to look at the word value. Yeah. In our industry, for normal reasons, a product starts somewhere and then it has to get marked up a few times because of marketing and the middlemen that touch it. This is it. true. For us, we literally sit it's down. It's direct, as, right? It's direct. It's you uh, other, and them. The only people in the loop are the people actually doing the installation. But otherwise, right. it's not model number five that gets marked up five times. Right. So if you actually look at the value, the actual cost of the materials we're using versus what the client pays to put it in the home, it's the same type of cost per square foot as a countertop would be. There's a lot the less margin after margin after Absolutely. margin. You guys need to get your margin to have a healthy business and support the client. Essentially, we are a time and materials engineering company. Yeah. And we're charging the same cost per square foot as if they were to build their own custom granite countertop or their own stainless steel stair on the way to their hot tub on their mega yacht. God, I want to see and some of the stuff you've you installed. Even when we say stainless steel, for example, yeah. if you actually get online, there's dozens and dozens of types of stainless steel. Oh, so yeah. We actually go through the, the painless work of work, painstaking work, of when we work with an architect because of corrosion and with so forth. type of stainless type steel? Of stainless? Is it 316L? Yeah, is it 2205? On a boat, you need different stainless steel Absolutely. than in a interior and we have you to know, match in the kitchen. You have corrosion issues and so forth. Yep. Um, and aluminum. So if it's going to be aluminum, what is the, the makeup, the composites of that aluminum yep. going to be? When should we use carbon fiber? When should we? It's fantastic. So, so we actually sit there in, in the mega yacht world and the large scale jet world. Yep. They're obviously for safety reasons often more advanced than what's happening in the home. So they have, spe you know, and obviously the, the FAA is going to be yep. working in the aircraft. They have specifiers that sit down with us and help us choose the materials for st structural reasons and corrosion reasons. Like Besides you have to use sound. this kind of material and it has to have these kind of tolerances. Absolutely. Now what's not mentioned yet so far in this conversation is the sound. Oh yeah. We work in absolutely <laughs> the best recording studios in the world. And there's often a large disconnect between the recording studio and a home. A recording studio often has budgets of 500,000, a million, 5 million, 10 million in some cases. And this is where the A-list performers are actually doing their work every day. Yeah. And they're playing at 192 megahertz recording it's and so forth. It's a perfect environment. Perfect. Now, some of those people do have the budget and they would like to have a small version of that in their home. Some of them actually like to record on a yacht. You know, it's, it's got the ocean air. It helps their voice. They don't have the paparazzi and stuff around. Must it be gives nice. them a nice feeling. Yeah. Or they want it on their aircraft. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be able to take that technology and morph it into a home or a yacht or an aircraft. In the recording studio, they don't mind hanging things visibly. To be able to take that level of quality and have it... It's got to be hidden in your house. In yeah. ...is another whole level of a oh, challenge. Oh, yeah. But when you're done, you can literally hear fingers touching guitar strings, a woman caressing a microphone, the whispers. Those fine details are what bring that realism yeah. back in. Another thing I like to mention is, if you looked at the world 100 plus years ago, there was no recorded music, but people still had music. So if somebody builds a castle on a hill, they invited live musicians to play the luncheons, plucking a harp, for afternoon tea yeah. and maybe a full symphony out in the garden. Yeah. You know, 
and, 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 and maybe even when they made love at night at, at 11 o'clock at night, someone played the violin. Down <laughs> yeah, home, exactly. Right? And Standing in, outside the window. And whatever. in modern day homes, it should not just be the home theater. In addition to the home theater, there should be fantastic system so a celebrity chef can come play in your, can come perform his or her That's service true. in the kitchen yeah. and still be able to be mic'd if they want to or play music in the background if someone wants to show off their car collection if they want to uh, have a cigar room and uh, you know even outdoors outdoors fantastic sound because the world has given you that acoustics naturally yeah. and just imagine how nice it would be to go out to your swimming pool which you spent hundreds of thousands if not millions on anyway and have things pop up like it's Disneyland and be able to listen to outdoor sound how about if you want to show the World Cup or the European Cup that just came on, or you want to see the Super Bowl or the Academy Awards, to have a pop-up glass screen come out there and be able to invite 300 of your closest friends over, and they can spill red wine on your grass, yeah. not inside in your house. So outdoor venues are something that's often untouched, and that's why I, I recommend to clients, really try to get a hold of those top-level AV integrators. We, we call our top team Academy X. We literally have hand-selected what we believe are the top 100 in the world. Uh, we worked in over 30 countries. And when a client meets these people, it's not just about how much can I buy a Model 5 for. Yeah. It's let's go into that meeting with an open mind and a framework of what we think we want and take their suggestions. Also bring the manufacturers in, not just from audio, not just from CAT, but bring out the Stuart film screens and bring out the, the Theo Kalamarak as the theater designers and bring out the acousticians and the power and grounding people and, and, and the people who build custom furniture. This whole custom world, kind of in a nutshell, Think of what you want to do like you'd build your custom home. You don't buy Model A home. Yeah. That's a tract home. If you want to build a custom home, you think of architect, designer, builder. Let's get together and have a meeting. So when you think of how can high-end audio integrate in that, you should also build that dream team. Yeah, um, I, I invite guy, them in, and then everybody gets together so that when we talk about, okay, you know, I, I want this theater, but I, I, want, uh, I want all the speakers hidden and, you know, uh, on top of that, I want them to do some crazy stuff. Maybe I want them hidden when they're not in use, but I want them to motorize out sure. and show themselves Absolutely. off. Because, hell, I spent $50,000 yeah. on these speakers. Right. Why not? You know? you know, We do high-rise buildings all over the world, and we will pop things up out of the floor, mm -hmm. out from the sidewalls, down from the ceiling. I mean, a lot of people are like, well, you know. Do you ever, do, do you ever use anyone else's? Components. I mean, like, for, oh, I'll give you an example. Like Martin Logan, I love Martin Logan's because the electro stack. I yeah, just sure it's a, it's a electro stack. Very, it's just a great technology. Air, ominous kind of a yeah. speaker. Sure, you would not want to manufacture electrostatic panels, would you? I mean, would you no, just? We actually work. If somebody loves the sound of an electrostatic panel, and Martin Logan does a great job. Yeah. Yes, they could own a pair of those, but maybe they want some reinforcement so the bass can balance the room and so forth. Yeah. We will actually do that. We build custom amplifiers that can be used on a Martin Logan. Right, so right. We are a, again, we are an engineering company first and a custom manufacturing audio company second. And we build everything from custom enclosures, custom drivers, custom grills, DSPs, which is the computer equalizer. Yep. Actually, that's kind of an interesting thing. If you look back, let's say the 1980s, and you went into a, a college dorm, you know, like when I went to school. Yeah. Everybody, every pair of guys or girls marched into the dorm room with a speaker with a 15-inch, 12-inch yeah, roof, exactly. with a mid-range and a tweeter, and an equalizer in addition yeah, to the ramp. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the girls down the hall still had a, you know, a 12-band equalizer. Good God. And Do you remember those old paper cones they yeah, had? Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So now, of course, we can make those paper cones much better. So yeah, a little bit. We can little make bit. them aluminum and titanium and carbon fiber and the rest of it. But, but what happened to the equalizer? And yeah. The, what, what happened to the equalizer is it actually got better. Instead of having a bunch of slides, it went into the computer world. But that ended up scaring the average audio video installer. So unfortunately, the average audio video installer doesn't put equalizers in the system as they should. Mm -hmm. Those equalizers are now, regardless of brand, called DSP, which means digital signal processor. At a small form, in your car, you have one. You may not know it, but you have a treble and bass control. Yep. And that's actually usually digitally you know, um, calibrating the sound in your, in your car. Well, just so you know, at the most exotic level now, we have two million equalization adjustments. Wow. Now, we don't have time on a computer to slide two million yeah. slides. What happens is we bring high caliber, uh, very tolerance microphones into that room with an engineering team. And let the computer we do the work. We set them up at, well, yes, there are some things that do a very good job of hitting a button, the computer does the work. Okay. In reality, that would also, also be asked, like asking a computer to do heart surgery on you. Yeah, yeah. You really should have some engineers kind of micromanaging that process. So we physically will use a combination of the computer's assistance plus real-world placement. Human so we'll guidance. actually place the microphone at every position in that room 
and be able to calibrate it and take into consideration, is the sofa leather or is it fabric? Wow. Is the floor hardwood or is it carpet? If it is, how thick? So anyway, by using modern tools, modern, really high calibrated microphones and computers and these equalizers called DSPs, like I said, we can use hardwood perforations, metal perforations, fabrics as thick as this suit, and, and if we can build enough audio horsepower behind those materials. To push through it. To push through it, and then recalibrate it. Yeah, just as if you, you can make it perfect. Make it perfect. It's like it wasn't even if there. If you bought a piano for 100 grand, would you drop it off untuned? No. Yeah. So what you would have is someone from Yamaha or Steinway would come out and tune that piano. The average person, maybe every six months. If you're a world-class musician, you'll tune that piano nightly. Yeah. Um, our systems do not need to be tuned nightly. Actually, they're, they're done once. Um, but then what's nice, and I, and I often forget to mention this when I'm talking to people, people are afraid that, well, I spend X amount of money and technology changes, I've lost it all. Actually, if you do these systems correctly, I'd venture to say between 80 90% of your system may never change. So think about it. If I build the enclosure out of something that's timeless, like yep. steel or granite or aluminum or concrete or corian, the you might change there forever. Yeah, the, you might change the components behind them. Actually, if you do it right, the enclosure's there forever. Uh -huh. The drivers built out of things like aluminum and titanium oh. and carbon are forever. Yeah. Really big, so those are more than lifetime. They say that the half-life of corian is over 100 million years underwater. Wow. But nonetheless, more than lifetime. Yeah. If the correct, big, correctly done amplifiers, in fact, our best amplifiers actually power the positive channel and the negative channel, so they actually do a push-pull. Yeah. So instead of a subwoofer going boom, they go boom, yeah. which is really quick, and which actually um, uh, doesn't give you hearing fatigue. So it's faster and more realistic and doesn't blur the sound. Anyway, the amplifiers can be lifetime. So if the system's done correctly, the only things that will change are anything with a computer in it, yeah. which might only be 10% of your pieces. New implementations of technology that don't pieces, exist and things. That's yeah. right. Even those pieces, if they're done right, will be on an open framework, an open card work basis. So if you were to spend, say, $25,000 from a processor like Theta Digital, yep. and new technology were to come along, 7.1 instead of 5.1, um, or you know, Audio 1.4, or, or an HDMI inputs, you literally just slide out the old card, and for three, four, five thousand dollars maximum, you slide in the new card, and you're off to the races again. So, so just understand that the only reason the world thinks that these things are changing is it's just computers are changing. And an open framework system, just like a recording studio, on a yearly basis, might only be upgrading four, five, maybe ten percent of their system, not all of it. That's awesome. That's so really cool. Well, I'll tell you what, I would love to see the things that you have seen in the last 20 years, you know. Uh, I can only <laughs> I can I, a lot of travel. I can only imagine the amazing kind of Come on in here, Callie. I can and the only people imagine we meet. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's it, so passionate to be able literally we have as many women clients as we have men because the women clients traditionally were looking at the aesthetics. So they are so amazed that this stuff can actually in many cases we bring ideas that make the home look even better than had we even before yeah. we did have been there. Yeah. And then traditionally for the people who love music, to be able to hear that fine detail or just rock and roll Led Zeppelin or the Rolling Stones or Pink Floyd at three o'clock in the morning in one room and not wake up the baby in the adjoining room is it's just amazing. fantastic. Yeah. Dream I'm sorry job. I missed the conversation. No, okay. I got here late and had trouble putting my ears on. We are, and you, and, and then I could never compete with your girlfriend over I here. Know, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you so much for hanging out and chatting with me. Oh, God, I hope we can continue this some other time. Maybe we come out and check out your factory, see some cool, you know, the way you build That'd these awesome. things and stuff. That'd be, they're, yeah. they're in California. We're oh, there all okay. the time. Yeah. So, you know. Anyway, thanks again. Very nice to meet you. Is that uh, why you're called California? Well. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have, a, have a great rest of the show.